why did I even buy this thing when there's a better 16 gigabyte variant coming out now? Ugh. Also, the 6900 XT had another benchmark leak. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So over on Twitter, leaker Tom Appysack shared this image, which by the way, there will be links to all of my sources in the description below. But in any case, if we take a look at the image, it shows an Asus ROG Zephyrus 15.6 inch laptop with the Ryzen 9 5900 HX processor, which that's actually very interesting. It looks like AMD might actually be announcing some new processors coming up here soon for the mobile division. And it also has the most interesting part, an NVIDIA 16 gigabyte RTX 3080. That's right, you heard me correctly, a 16 gigabyte RTX 3080, though the only thing with this that I don't really like is that unfortunately it's a mobile GPU. So, you know, when I went to look more into it, I found another tweet from the Twitter leaker Ryachu, which stated the actual specs of this RTX 3080. And he says, quote, rumor RTX 3080 mobile, it's based on apparently the GA104 GPU. So what that means is that it's not actually based on the GA102 die that the RTX 3080 is based off of. So what we're looking at here is probably a more full version of the RTX 37. Then he goes on to state that it apparently has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 256-bit bus and 6,144 CUDA cores, and he says that the performance might be better than an RTX 3070 desktop variant, which, yeah, I don't know about that. Even though it has more CUDA cores, it's probably going to be clocked quite a bit lower. So, you know, what we're looking at here, like I mentioned earlier, seems to be the full version of the RTX 3070, because if you look at the RTX 3070 right now, it's not actually the full die. It's ever so slightly cut down, so it looks like they enabled what seems to be the last two streaming multiprocessors on the 3070 die and got it from 5,888 CUDA cores, which is what we see on the desktop variant, all the way up to 6,144 CUDA cores, which of course is going to make it a little bit faster, though again, with the slightly lower clock speeds that you're probably going to be looking at on the mobile side because it simply just can't clock quite as high if they're trying to keep that power draw lower. Well, yeah, it's probably not actually going to be any faster, but you know what I find most interesting about this is that 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I and mean, it goes to show you that, you know, NVIDIA really doesn't have too much of a problem putting double the amount of VRAM on the current RTX 3070. And it's a little bit of a shame that we don't see that on the desktop right now. And so a lot of you might be asking the question, are we actually going to see this GPU on the desktop? Because like many of you, I think that eight gigabytes on the desktop RTX 3070 in 2020 going into 2021 is a little bit weak since we had eight gigabytes all the way back as far as the GTX 1070, which was a $380 GPU. And uh, to this day, if you do the inflation calculator that comes to around $412, I believe, whereas the RTX 3070, you know, all these years later is still eight gigabytes and it's a $500 GPU. So you're really paying more money for the same amount of VRAM, even though the performance has gone up significantly. And again, that's a bit of a shame in my opinion, because I think that the 3070 could really do with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And if it did have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, I would definitely be telling everyone to buy the RTX 3070 over the 3080, because I mean, for the most part, most people who play at 1440p, even high refresh rate don't really need the power of an RTX 3080 though there are some of you out there that do and so just getting that extra bit of VRAM would help it quite a bit since I think a lot of games coming out here in the near future will end up using more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM even at 1440p simply due to the fact that the consoles are going to have access to 12 gigabytes of VRAM so it's looking here like the 8 gigabytes of VRAM isn't going to hold up too well going forward into the future and I really really would have liked to see 16 gigabytes but you know unfortunately I just don't think we're going to see this on the desktop because the current rumors that I'm hearing about an RTX 3070 Ti seem to be based on the GA102 die, which is apparently going to have the same 10 gigabytes of VRAM as the RTX 3080, which of course, it's much better to have 10 gigabytes of VRAM than 8 gigabytes of VRAM. But hey, if we could get 16 gigabytes of VRAM, that would be much better. So it's a bit of a shame that we're only going to probably get 10 gigabytes of VRAM on the 3070 Ti coming up here. And we're likely not going to see this GPU on the desktop, though it is certainly possible that you could see it 3070 Super or 3070 Ti or even just 3070 16 gigabyte variant in the future coming with that 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It's definitely possible, but I just don't think it's going to happen because I think NVIDIA would rather give you more performance and a little bit less VRAM for 600 bucks than a lot more VRAM and a little bit less performance. I think it just makes it a lot more competitive of a product versus the 6800 and 6800 XT. So don't go throwing out your 3070s yet because frankly, you're lucky to have them.
And then finally, it looks like the 6900 XT had yet another benchmark leak in Ashes of the Benchmark by Twitter leaker Tom Appisack once again, showing it paired with an i7-8700K. And while these performance results do look pretty good, it does look like it's definitely being CPU bottlenecked here as it's being run at 1080p. So obviously running a 6900 XT in a somewhat CPU dependent title such as Ashes of the Singularity at 1080p, you're definitely going to end up being CPU bottlenecked at some point here. And it looks like that definitely is the case. And so I just want to remind you guys once again that when the 6900 XT comes out in a couple days, A, it is definitely going to be difficult to get as Paul from Not an Apple Fan, which by the way, go ahead and subscribe to him. He does really great content, told me that his sources are saying that they're expecting about 50% of the amount that they got of the 6800 XT for the 6900 XT on launch day. And you know, the 6800 XT was very difficult to get on launch day. So it's going to be even more difficult to get the 6900 XT on launch day. But on top of that, also the 6900 XT is likely not going to be that much faster faster than the 6800 XT because it's essentially the same GPU but all you're looking at is another I believe 11% more shaders because there's eight more compute units in total 80 versus 72 on the 6800 XT which you know it's, it's since things don't scale perfectly you're probably looking at somewhere between five to eight percent more performance so uh, stock to stock the 6900 XT is likely going to be just ever so slightly slower than an RTX 3090 now of course these RDNA 2 GPUs do overclock much better than the Ampere alternative so if you do some overclocking and you have smart access memory enabled, the RTX 3090 will likely get beat by the 6900 XT, but you do have to keep in mind that the 3090 can also overclock, even though it can't overclock quite as much, so it'll probably be a very close battle, overclock to overclock, though I do expect the 6900 XT to take the slight lead, but you know, when that 3080 Ti likely comes out in January, it's definitely going to be a tough choice between $2,000 GPUs. Now for me, it's going to be an easy choice because I'm not going to be buying a $1,000 GPU because that's just, for me personally, simply too much to pay for a gaming GPU and doing some light editing on it since I can easily get by with an RTX 3070 no problem that's definitely strong enough GPU for me but for those of you who are willing to spend a thousand dollars in a GPU I could see it being you know somewhat of a tough purchase going okay they're both a thousand dollars one of them can overclock a little bit better but the other one has more features that I like depending on who you are so again uh, you know I am looking forward to the 6900 XT but I'm not expecting it to be too much faster than the 6800 XT but hey that's just what I think what do you think about about this leaked 16 gigabyte RTX 3080. Do you think we'll see something similar on the desktop or do you think it's gonna be locked to mobile? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.